Hey guys, John here. Just uh, wanted to show you all a very special Christmas gift I got over the holiday. And it would be the original Deities and Demigods for first edition AD&D. Yep. It's beautiful. Beautiful Errol Otis cover. Yep. There's the little uh, and there's the little TSR wizard right there. Classic. There's the uh, title page. Which has another piece of Errol Otis art right there. It's awesome. And then it says copyright 1980. There's the foreword. Is it in every D and D book? There's the preface, and I believe this is the original, f true first printing of the book because I don't see, from what I've been reading. Uh, anything of a thank you to uh, Chaosium Company who were the creators of the Call of Cthulhu role playing game and who TSR was required to write a thank you note in order to use the Cthulhu and Morellian mythos but so but so yeah I believe this is a so and if it is that would if this is an original first printing then this book is increasingly rare but if anybody uh, would like to clarify that for me that'd be most grat that'd be most appreciated anyway here's some notes on uh, god stats and how they work it's a little cool piece of art right there but anyway, this is just about uh, dungeon mastering gods and clerics about clerics and their deity and just cool. Some information on omens, mortality, immortality, divine ascension, which is uh, something you don't really see a lot in uh, D and D books today when it comes about gods. Like, uh, it's just they don't talk about that, which is odd, you know. Cause that's cool stuff and stuff that happens, you know? You know, here we are. First mythos, the American Indian. Which is very cool. We don't often think of the American Indian myths fitting into our high-powered D&D games. I'm going to try to show you all, all as much as I can. Here's some Arthurian heroes, because it's not just about gods, it's also about heroes of myth. King Arthur and his knights. Well, actually, a uh, funny, interesting thing about uh, King Arthur, actually, the first campaign I ever ran had some ties to, had some themes with uh, King Arthur and his knights. But that's for another video. Babylonian mythos, which is cool. The goddess of Ishtar. The Celtic mythos, and I'm gonna skip around a bit here. Try to cover it all in. There's the goddess of Vice. It's another thing about AD and D art. They didn't, their females were. They weren't afraid to show anything. They weren't afraid. It's good. Here's the Chinese mythos, which... Another thing you don't see much in D&D, you don't see much Oriental campaigns. But they were there. 
And here it is, the Cthulhu Mythos. All artwork brought to you by Errol Otis again. There's there's the man himself, Cthulhu, right there. Looking all boss-like. There's some more Cthulhu. That's a crazy picture. Another thing I like about this picture is that it shows a princess and castle. Because we normally think of just Cthulhu as 1920s America, not not a medieval Europe. But yeah, it's cool. Anyway, moving on. The Egyptian mythos. All detailing the Egyptian gods. Goes into some hieroglyphics. Finnish mythos. More beautiful artwork. And now we're into the Greek mythos. The Indian mythos. Jap Japanese. Morellian mythos. Awesome picture right there. Also, another cool thing about AD&D artwork is they weren't really afraid to show you really goofy crap. Like, a lot of AD&D creatures are just goofy. And now it's not really goofy, it's all... Everything's very serious. Except for a couple, couple exceptions, but yeah. For the most part, everything's all serious and in color and just sometimes you just want to see some vulture lions in a book. There's some non-human de deities. North Mythos, of course, because you can't have D&D without having Thor and all them. Speaking of Thor... Sumerian Mythos. And tail end of the Norse Mythos. Pip Sumeria. Then the appendixes, which details the planes, which I believe this is one of the first books that featured the planes. Don't quote me on that, but I believe so. At least cover them in great detail about them being connected to alignment and all, so basically the foundation for Planescape. Hey, well here's Appendix 2, which goes into deities and clerics and Holy Days, which is just cool. It's another thing you don't see much in books today. Like, you know, in a, just you don't see that much in books where they talk about what clerics wear of this particular god and what, what Holy Days they worship on, which is flavor, but that's pretty good flavor. I mean, that's stuff that I... I, I chill on, but... Yeah. Things happen, hopefully with D&D Next and the whole going, looking back at previous editions, Wizards of the Coast will do something. But anyway, there we are. And, uh... That's... Deities and Demigods. For AD&D, it's a good book. Uh, if you can afford it, I recommend you buy yourself a copy or buy a copy of uh, the second printing, uh, which goes by Legends and Lore. They're very good books, good references to have, and you learn something about culture and di different myths. Anyway, as always, this is, I'm John. Happy gaming and. I'll see you, and I will see you in uh, 2013, my friends.